Okay, so we're talking about effective communication. But before we move into that, um, let's start with this quote by George Bernard that said, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has already taken place. Please give me a moment. Let me move this to... Okay, so, so let me start with a couple of questions. Of would you rather? So, would you rather be able to read people's mind perfectly or have the power to effortlessly persuade anyone with your communication skills? So, which one would you prefer? You can unmute and speak, please. Persuasion. Persuasion. So you prefer to be able to persuade people with your communication skills rather than read people's mind. Why is that? People's minds are dirty. So I'd rather persuade you than read what you are thinking. Okay. That's a nice one. So um, any other person? Okay, so the next one is, would you rather send an important email with a couple of minor typos, just a few mistakes, or send a perfectly crafted email to the wrong person? And don't forget, it's an important email. So which one you prefer? Minor typos. Minor typos. Okay, so why do you prefer to send minor typos instead of like perfectly crafted email to the wrong person? Typos are, yeah. are, are, are the evidence that I'm human. Okay, so it's normal to make mistakes. There, there, there is always room for mistakes, so it, and, it, and it, it, it can be corrected later. Okay. So, um, okay, so who else? So, who would prefer to I'll send, send it? Okay. I'd rather send um, an email with minor typos than a perfectly crafted email to the wrong person because sending a perfect crafted email to the wrong person completely defeats the purpose of the email in the first place. So it's not really achieving the goal you're set to. Okay. Um, you're, you're aiming at so the error, the error mail. All right. So here now, we prefer to send the important mail with minor typos. So um, why some people prefer to actually send the perfectly one to the wrong person? Because they believe they can always just um, send another email to the person that it was a mistake. But then again, so um, the third question here is, would you rather be known for your clear and concise writing or your engaging and persuasive speaking skills? So which one would you prefer, your writing skills or um, speaking skills? I'm going with writing because the pen is the king. Okay, how about speaking? <laughs> there are a lot of barriers to speaking, a lot of nuance to consider, but... With speaking. And, 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 and I think that clear writing will eventually make your speaking engaging and persuasive. Okay, so if you... So I, I'll, I'll start with the writing, then maybe. Writing consistent, consistently will eventually make, make me a better speaker. Speaker, okay. Okay, so how about the phrase like, you write the way you speak? So if you are also like a good speaker, then your writing too will be engaging and persuasive too. Sorry? 
I say there are some people that believe that we write the way we speak. So how about if um like your your speaking is top notch, so therefore it will also influence your writing. I think it's it's, it's the other way around. If you are writing, it's the other way around. Yeah, if your writing is top notch, it means your speech is all is also, it's also top notch. Yeah. Okay. So here now, from the three exercises, you, from the first one, would you be able to um, rather prefer to read people's mind? Most people would prefer to be able to communicate effortlessly, persuade people, and that's where communication skills comes in. Then with the second one, sending typo, um, an important email with couple, couple of minor typos, and then sending a perfectly crafted one to the wrong person. So here we are just pinpointing like with communication skills, there is room for you making make, making um few mistakes. Then, but if you send a perfectly um, crafted email to the wrong person, that it negates the the communication because then the person that you are trying to like talk to is not even getting the information at all. So and then for the third one, which is, would you rather be known for your clear, concise writing or engaging and persuasive speaking skills? Here yeah, we are just pinpointing that writing and communication is not limited to just speaking. It has to do with the way you speak, how you speak, even your writing skills as well. So now that we've talked about that, let's move on to what communication is. So basically, communication is the act of transferring information from one place and uh, from one person to another through verbal and through verbal, non-verbal, or written means. So when you are communicating, it's more than you just talking, just getting the words out there, or it's more than you just writing something on a piece of paper or just typing. So with the verbal, it has to do with you saying things that make sense. And we have the non-verbal communications too that has to do with your body language, how you say those things. Then the written um, means too has to do with your writing. So all of these things, they are all um, communication skills that we have to develop. But when we are talking about talking or maybe communicating with someone, we have to bear in mind like everything we say, Every message you pass across has three basic things to it. What you say, what you meant, and what the other person understood. So th those three things are very important because there are some situations that you say something, but then the person you are telling will be like, we may basically be getting the wrong message altogether. And then you have to like start, intro um, start correcting yourself, try saying what like oh this is what i mean this i don't mean that so like what we say what we mean and what the other person understood and yeah me myself i've been in a couple of situations where you mean uh, maybe you're communicating with somebody you're having a conversation and then the person will just take your message the wrong way then you have to like try to explain yourself all over again so we, most of us find ourselves in such situations and it has to do with your communication skills because it's more than you just talking. So you have to bear in mind, like when you're communicating, maybe even if when you're writing, it has to um, convert, um, it has to pass across what you say and what you mean and what the other person also understood from what you say. Then we have various reasons for communication. We have, um, you may communicate to maybe inform, to request or to persuade or ensure understanding. So there are different reasons for communication. So um, before we move on, with before we move on, please share some more um, of your experiences that you've had that has to do with maybe you communicating with somebody and then you have to like re-explain yourself over again. Anyone wants to share their experience? Can you maybe rephrase the question? 
Okay, I should rephrase the question. So what I was asking is, have you ever been in a situation where what you, maybe you are talking with somebody, then the person will misconstrue what you are saying, then you have to re-explain yourself. Have you ever been in such situation? Yeah, yeah. See, in situations where I'm, I'm, I'm trying to communicate through satire and the other person does not understand. So then I'll have to explain the, it's like situations where one you, are, you have to explain a joke. Please come again, I've not heard the last part. It, I can summarize it in saying like situations where you've made a joke and there's person who does not understand it. So you will have to explain it to him or maybe he misunderstood the joke and you have to, to take this thing out of the joke by explaining it. Okay, okay. So um, you mentioned something about satire. Do you write um, satirical articles or maybe um, videos or the likes? Yeah, yeah, sometimes I try to. Okay, that is really interesting. Perhaps you maybe share some of your articles with us, maybe on Slack. So yeah, let's um continue. Uh, is it only me? I cannot hear anything. She's muted, so maybe we should give her some time. Okay, sorry. Um, I was muted. Sorry. Okay, so you can hear me now. Clearly. Okay, so I said um, communication is the bloodline, blood and uh, life blood of an organization. So. So um. When communication is not effectively done in the workplace, it's in, it negatively impacts a lot of things, such as the productivity, even um, the collaboration amongst um, different team members and employee motivation as well. So, for example, if you're working in a team and um, maybe you're working on a project together, there will be some places where you have challenges or even when you make progress, but you want to let your team members know about it. So if you do not really communicate those things across, you do not pass the message across effectively, you find that like the overall um, progress of the team will be weighing down. So communication is really important in any workplace. So the next thing is, so how can we then make our communication stand out such that when we are talking to clearly understands what it is we are saying without misconstruing our words and we say it in a clear concise and even a meaningful way for the person so that's where we have the seven c's of communication and the first one has to do with um is clear so the first one is that whatever you are saying your message should be clear if you want to communicate you should first of all ask yourself like what are you, what is it exactly that you want to say what what message exactly is it that you want to pass across to the person or to your audience so you should be clear on your purpose of um, your message so the next thing is it should be concise so you should keep to the point and you should make your message short and simple like it should not be a talkative as we already pointed out talking or you just talking does not equate you being um, a good communicator or you writing a long piece of article does not make you um, a good writer anyways but what message you're trying to pass across it should be clear and it should be concise as well not bombarding it with unnecessary words then the next thing is concrete 
So the message you should pass across, you should provide the details of it, but not too much details as well. For example, if you are leading a team and you have um to you have a meeting, then you want to send a reminder email to your team members. Such an email should talk about the purpose of the meeting, when it will take place, the time of the meeting, and if you want um your team members to respond to the meeting. So the message what you want should be clear on the onset. You should provide the you should provide the details of everything. Then the next thing is what you are saying should be correct. It should be factual, not just you um, trying to come up with lies and the like. So what the message you are trying to pass across, it should be accurate and it should be grammatically correct as well. And it should be fact. Then the next one is coherent. And this one is usually very visible in um, writing pieces. For example, if you have different paragraphs together and they are disjointed, you, you notice like the flow of the article will be so messed up. So your message should be clear, it should be concise, it should be concrete, correct, and it should be coherent. One point leading to another, it should flow. There should be a flow of message should be laid out logically. Then it should be complete. So such that you ensure that the person you are talking to understands everything that needs to be understood from your message it should be clear then the last one is it should be courteous because there's a saying like what you say um it's not only what you say that matters but how you say it your body language too matters a lot so your message should be polite should be friendly open and professional depending on the environment the audience you are speaking to so it should be courteous. So these are the seven NCs of communication. The first one, the message should be clear. It should be concise. It should be concrete, correct. It should be coherent. It should be complete. And it should be courteous as well. So now we have the framework for effective communication. But before we talk about this framework for effective communication, I would like us to share from maybe our previous experience. If we've had a, maybe you've had, um, let's say, I don't want to say disagreement with someone, but you've had um, complaint about someone, or you want to share um, how you feel about something to another person, then, so here now we're talking about different ways that you can phrase the thing so that a person receives the message well and then the message is clear. So that is what we are going to talk about in the seven, um, the frameworks of effective communication. So the first one, and this framework, it lies on the seven key uh, C's of communication as well. Just like from the previous one, when we said what you're saying should be um, correct. So here we have, you should state the facts. So you should state what happened objectively. For example, if you have, let me say, for if you have friends and then you guys have um, maybe misunderstanding or anything like that. So you should state what happened objectively or you can go about like, I noticed that or I observed that, all of those things. Then you should state how you feel and what maybe what the person did, what their, how their action makes you feel. So you can just go about like, this made me feel so, so and so way and then your expectations what are your unmet needs then your actions what are some of those things you want them to work on what are some of the things you want them to implement mm -hmm. or i would like if so so and so thing i would like if you do some things like this then at the end of the day you should always come back to um you should come back to what their own suggestion you should, because what you are saying you should say it in a constructive way too and then you should empathize with their need so at the end of it, you can just go about like, so how what, how do you feel about this? What do you suggest? How should we progress? What do you think you can go about maybe the actions you've mentioned previously? Then after that, we have different strategies to improve our communication. Because when we are talking about the um, seven C's of communication, where we say we you have to be concise, most times you realize like maybe you are being talkative in some situations. It could be maybe um, you are nervous or um, you are stressed. So you have to understand the root cause of maybe the reason why you are not being concise 
or so all of once you've understood that then you're able to address the issue so the first one is that you should learn to manage your stress you should recognize when you are becoming stressed so that you not let out um maybe your frustration and then the next one is you should stay under you should still come under pressure as well then you should be willing to compromise and this depends on the situation and the audience then the most important thing about communication especially when it comes to speaking is it is not only you um, it is not only about talking but you also listening because communication is a two way street the person you are talking to and the person the person you are talking to should be able to receive your message and give you response so there are some key things that should be put in place when communicating and after you've made your point you should try to listen to the person's um, perspective as well and when the person is speaking you should try as much as possible not to interrupt them or speak over them then the next one is you should empathize with them try to understand from the person's own point of view and you should be patient and try to be impartial and this is very important when you are running um, a team for example, if it's in a workplace and you're working with your um, team members on a project, so you should try to be patient because everyone have their different um, attitude. So you should try to be patient and impartial. Then we, I'll leave you with this stick that communication is only effective when we communicate in a way that is meaningful to the recipient and not ourselves. So um, that is what we have on the presentation on communication before we move on to the challenge. So before we move on to the challenge, does anyone have any question? Any questions, any suggestions? So we can move on to the challenge document and see what we have for this week. Okay, thank you, Sustain. Okay, thank you. So yeah, let me share the other slides. So here we have, um, Okay, so hope you can see my screen. All right, so um, for this week, the challenge is on effective communication in the workplace. So from what you said before, that communication is the bedrock of successful and successful interaction whether it is personal relationship or professional setting so what we are seeing from the seven um from the seven seas of communication it should be concise it should be clear it should be concise it should be clear and then it should be cautious as well so all of those things we already talked about them in this slide so let's move on to the challenge itself so here this is the background so you have been hired to coordinate a team of five members that are currently working on the alpha project because their team lead recently resigned so now you've been hired as a team lead so the team has been working on the project for four weeks and despite being composed of highly skilled professionals they are significantly behind schedule and they have only two weeks left to deadline so on your second day of employment, you realize that the team has some issues that have been negatively impacting their performance. And these are some of the issues that you noticed on your second day. So you realize that the team, they began to work without a well-defined understanding of the project's goals and its strategic plan. 
So this has led to inefficiencies as team members engage in tasks without a clear direction or understanding of the overall of, um, project objectives. So the second thing is that the team members, they have not been assigned roles that best fit their skill sets, leading to inefficiencies and frustrations. Then the third one is that team members do not regularly communicate their progress, their challenges or needs. And this leaves some team members isolated when they encounter difficulties because they don't know who to meet, how to go about it. Then the fourth one is that although these team members, as you said, that they are individually capable, they tend to work alone and they do not share insights. So this isolation not only slows down the individual tax, but also prevents the team from leveraging collective knowledge to overcome complex challenges. Then the fifth um, issue is that two of the team members out of those five, two of them happens to be chronic latecomers. They resume work late, and I, I always late to schedule meetings too. And this attitude has some drawbacks on the overall team. So those are the five um, issues you realize that the, your team members have. And don't forget, we have two weeks to deadline of the project. So the first and uh, the task you have to do here is that you should describe four steps that you will take to ensure that all team members understand the project goals and their individual responsibilities. So how are you going to go about each of your team members ensuring that they understand the project's goals and their individual responsibilities too? Then what three ways would you ensure that each team member is assigned a role that fits their skills and not just any role? You know, we've said like each of them are very, they are capable. Why are you going to make sure that they are, the roles, they are, um, the skills, their skills fit the, each of the roles that you are assigning? Then the third one is I should describe three strategies that you would implement to improve communication among your team members. Then propose three methods to foster a collaborative attitude among team members. And then using the framework of effective communication that we talked about during the presentation, you should outline how you would make your concern known to the two latecomers in the team. So that is what we have. And then all of these things, you should create a PowerPoint pre presentation. It should not be more than seven slides with each of um, the answers to those questions. And then you submit it on the next in PDF format. So that is the challenge. Um, should I go over it once again? Or you understand? Okay. You understand? Okay, go on. Uh, can you please repeat the first task? Okay. So the first one, you should describe four steps that you will take to ensure that all team members understand the project's goals and their individual responsibilities. You know, here is just hypothetical in the sense that the project is alpha project we don't know exactly what they are working on but this is what you realize that your team members are facing so those are some of the issues which um that has been delaying the the project all along they don't they don't really understand the um the project's aims and objectives so the first thing is how are you going to go about them understanding that how will you do that so that is the first thing that is the first question. Then the second one is that the team members, they have not been assigned goals that best fit their skill sets, leading to inefficiencies and frustrations. So I'm going to make sure that each of those team members, the five of them, they have been assigned the goals that fit their skill sets. So this has to do with you communicating with them. So that, you know, we are talking about effective communication. So you have to like get to understand their rules, just hypothetical. Then the third one is team members did not regularly communicate their progress, their challenges or needs. And this leaves some of the team members isolated and when they encounter difficulties. So what will you do to make sure like that there is collaborative um, spirit among your team? Then the fourth one, also similar to the third one, which is although team members are individually capable, they tend to work alone and they do not share insights. 
the, this isolation not only slows down the individual tax, but also prevents the team from leveraging collective mm -hmm. knowledge to overcome complex challenges. Then the fifth one is that out of your five um, members, out of the five members in the team, two of them are chronic latecomers. They resume work late and they are always late to schedule meetings. So using the um, framework of effective communication that we talked about, so how are you going to make your concern known to the two latecomers? So that is what the submission, the tax is about. Then you write your answers, um, make it in a PowerPoint presentation. It should not be more than seven slides, and then you upload it in PDF format to the 10X. So um, do you understand? Yes, thank you, Maria. Okay, you're welcome. So yeah, so the, the deadline, for this is on Saturday, 8 p.m. UTC. So the deadline is on Saturday. And then this is the late um, policy. And we have the marking rubrics here. So it can guide you on how you go about answering them and how you'll be graded soon. So yeah, that is what we have for this week. So yes. So right now the challenge document and the slide you don't really you don't ha have access to it, but in the next five minutes I'm going to add your emails to the document so that you'll be able to have um, access to them and they will share it on this we share it on Slack too. So do you, anyone have any question? All right. So no questions, no suggestions, thank you. All right, so that is all. Let me stop recording.